What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing great, and I hope you are too. It's me, Kiki B. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kiki B Plays Fallout 76. So, shelters are cool, and we have a bunch to choose from by now, but in my opinion, the entrances are kind of lacking imagination. I mean, there's not a lot of variety in them, and the gigantic vault door ones are really obnoxious. So, what's a Wastelander to do about it? Well, build your own. Today, I'm finally continuing with our shelter series, which has been a long time coming. And I'm going to give you some ideas and step-by-step -step tutorials for building your own actually cool custom shelter entrance structures, like this wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey, bigger-on-the-inside TARDIS behind me, and others. Before we dive into that, though, I just wanted to take a sec to address last week's video on the Nuka-Cola crate stalls. I had done the testing and recording for that video in a workshop because I was out of camp slots, and only found out the day after the video went out that they behave completely differently in workshops than in camps. I apologize for any inconvenience or frustration that might have resulted from that, and I will definitely not make that same mistake again. I posted a solution in the comments that a kind viewer found for removing the crates and stairs in your camp, and have been in touch with Bethesda about the issue. Hopefully we'll have a proper solution soon, because the crates really are cool, and I want to be able to use them properly. And real quick, if you still love what I do here, and you're interested in supporting the channel, you have two options. You can join our Patreon family, or become a channel member right here on YouTube. Head on over to patreon.com slash kikibi, that link is also down in the description, or click on that join button below to find out more. And of course, subscribing and turning on those channel notifications really helps me out, is completely free, and ensures that you will never miss out on the next absolutely amazing video, so what are you waiting for? Do it! Also, join us over on the Happy Camper Discord, where we have cute pet pics, cool artwork, a trading hub, and so much more, and also on Instagram and Twitch. We would love to see you there. I will be returning to Twitch on the usual days and times after the holidays. Now we've got all that out of the way, let's get building. This first one is crazy simple and super easy on the budget. If you've got some rocky cliffs in your camp and you want a nice simple entrance for your mine or dig site shelters, grab one of these covered bridge end pieces, stick your shelter door in it right at the back, and then put it up against the cliff. You can do this with one of the vault shelters if you really want, but this just looks the best, and also the two cave shelters are pretty much the best shelters in the game. If you try to put the entrance in after you move the bridge piece, it'll probably go all wonky, so just do it first and save yourself the trouble. Put a lantern in there, add some signage if you want, whatever floats your boat, and you've got a lovely custom cave entrance that looks right at home among the mines of Appalachia. Another simple option for shelter entrances is any bunker-like prefab. But the problem with those is that the doorways are sometimes really big, and you can see past the shelter entrance into the empty building, and that just looks dumb, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to grab a big wavy willard's wall and stick it behind where the door is going to go, since it's wide and tall and blends in pretty well with the concrete. I'm not claiming this is anything brilliant, just something you might not have thought of before, so here's me thinking of it for you. Anyway, stick it in there, and if the pillar on the end doesn't want to snap on, just turn off snapping and it should go in just fine. Put your shelter entrance in, and you're good to go. You can even blueprint it to make placing this just as easy as placing a giant vault entrance. Afterward, you can even decorate it up all fancy, make a little Free States bunker out of it or something. Enjoy. And now for something completely different. Time to build a TARDIS. So make a cross of five foundations wherever you want the thing to go. You will need the dark blue wallpaper from the Atomic Shop for this because it's almost the perfect shade of TARDIS blue. So slap down some doorway walls and windowed half walls with the wallpaper side facing outward, and then if you want to, you can put some half walls and doorway walls on the inside. This part is optional, and it just makes it easy to block off the windows. The metal walls work best for that, by the way. If you don't care about people seeing in the windows, then just do one inside half wall and doorway at the back so that you have something to snap the roof onto and delete it afterward. Anyway, once you have the doorways up, you can delete the half walls below to save budget. Snap one of these pointy roof bits onto the inner wall or walls, and go ahead and put the front on now. Stick your shelter entrance in a little bit back from the edge of the center foundation, then add your doorway and a half wall in front of it. I forgot to line the inside of the front wall, so don't forget to do that if you're going to, and just leave the upper inside wall as a doorway so that you can fully access the shelter door. Now grab the circus trailer door and snap it in there backwards. If it won't let you put it in backwards, it's because you removed the extra foundation first, so put it back if you did that. Anyway, make her blue and delete the extra foundations, and if you want any lights, you can put a generator with a conduit inside. Which you could have done before you put the door in if you were better at planning ahead than I am. Ah, 
I'm going to put the planetarium lamp on top because it's spacey wacy. So there you go, you now have your very own bigger on the inside TARDIS. Just remember, she might not take you where you want to go, but she'll always take you where you need to go. Bonus points if you hide a theremin somewhere so that you can play spacey music too. Next up, we're going to make a really versatile, completely blueprintable little shell building. Start by putting two foundations down, and then we're going to offset one foundation on each side of it by half a floor. So extend your floor outward. There are two ways to perfectly offset a floor. If you don't have the catwalk set, build some stairs up, attach half an upper floor, build some stairs down from that, and attach a foundation. If you have the catwalks, just use the half-length catwalk and snap your foundation to that. However you do it, this is what the foundation is going to look like. Now we're going to build a little house, and the shape of it allows us to keep it small yet interesting looking, so it doesn't look like a plain basic house from a little kid's drawing with a pointy roof. You can use absolutely any build set for this, and achieve all sorts of different looks that way, depending on what the theme or style of your camp is. This structure is really perfect for filling space in a settlement or town style camp. So build a structure that's tall in the center like this with two small wings on each side, and I personally really like sets with windowed half walls for this to add some variety to the front. So here's what that looks like before you put your roofs on. Now go ahead and pop those in place, and that's your finished basic structure. Now if you want to keep people from peeking into your empty shell of a house, head on into the wings, and we're going to use a really simple trick. Just take a large-ish painting and pop it on over the window. It'll block them off, look kind of old and beat up, and not take too much budget. On the high windows, you can add some candles in front of the windows to give it a little creepy glow at night if you want. Now to finish this off, you can just take the doorway off for a moment and place your shelter entrance down in the middle of the floor. Replace the wall, and you've got a boarded up creepy house. If you're going for a different vibe, you can set the vault style entrances into the wall really nicely so they actually look like proper doorways. Place down a basic wood wall, burn it with the flamer trap, and put your shelter door in so that it hangs off the front of the foundation a little, maybe even a little farther than I did. Then repair the wood wall and change it to the doorway of your choice, and you've got a vault doorway that actually doesn't look too bad. So here are a couple of finished decorated examples for you. First, my haunted house, which I originally designed for a carnival build that I was working on a year or so ago. It's nice and creepy. Obviously, the extra decor does add to the budget drain, but it looks so great. Then we've got a cute little abandoned industrial building with some fun decor. I did decide to go with a normal door on this one in the end. If you open it up, the shelter is right behind it. Okay, last but not least, we're going to be doing a little boarded up cabin. This one's fun. So build a basic cabin with the wood build set, and then break this front wall with the flamer trap. Don't use a doorway, just a plain wall here. Now the very basic version is just putting a cave shelter entrance in here and repairing the wall behind it to create a boarded up doorway. It looks super cute and feels right at home in Appalachia. At least, most of Appalachia. Not so much the White Spring. But we can, and should, strive to go above and beyond, so that's what we're going to do. Break that wall down, and we're going to be using the message board kiosk to take this to the next level. Place it so the little concrete feeties are just sticking out past the edge of the foundation, and then put your shelter entrance down so it sticks out just past the feet. If you get the entrance too far back, when you try to click on it, you'll only be able to click on the kiosk, so make sure it sticks out far enough. Repair the wall, and you've got a cool doorway with a little lit up awning. So if you power the kiosk and throw some random junk around on the ground, you'll get this cute little boarded up shack that looks really at home pretty much anywhere on the map that's not this golf course. That's it from me today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something. Don't forget to make sure that you're subscribed and you've turned on channel notifications so you don't miss out on the next absolutely amazing video. If you liked this and you're interested in supporting the channel, check out that Patreon link in the description or click the join button right below this video to become a channel member. And of course, join us over on Discord, Instagram, and Twitch. I will be returning to Twitch soon and we would love to see you there. And with that, folks, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, 
happy holidays, and I will see you in the next video.